Hey folks, welcome back. Pop Retro. You can find me at Pop Retro One at Twitter and Instagram, Facebook.com slash Pop Retro One. Also, you can visit me at Patreon.com slash Pop Retro. And, uh, and also, uh, here on YouTube, subscribe if you haven't done so. Just go down and click that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. So, today I wanted to talk about a film that got a lot of buzz over the last couple of years as it was being put together, and that is New York Ninja. Now, Vinegar Syndrome, the boutique uh, releasing company, put this out in uh, 2021, and I just re-watched it. Uh, I watched it when I first uh, purchased it, and I just recently uh, re-watched it. Um, one of the Facebook groups I'm in was, was doing a uh, sort of a movie club thing, and this was the movie that was chosen to uh, to watch. And so I hadn't watched all the special features, so I thought, oh, I'll rewatch it and also take in the special features this time. But I was just reminded of how special this film really is. Now, if you don't know anything about it, New York Ninja was shot in 1984 and not released until 2021. And there's a reason for that. And that reason is because the original company that was producing New York Ninja in 1984, uh, 21st Century Releasing Corporation. It went out of business and wound up, or excuse me, it, well, it did eventually go out of business, but around this time in 1984, uh, there were just problems and issues with New York Ninja. The budget and a bunch of other things happened to where they just couldn't finish the film. So they had all this footage shot and it turned out to be a ton of footage. And they wound up not being able to, uh, to release it or even edit it or put it together. So fast forward to like 2020 and, or maybe 2019, somewhere around there. And Vinegar Syndrome purchases a bunch of uh, old film materials from 21st century uh, distribution. And among them, was New York Ninja. And what kind of piqued their interest at Vinegar Syndrome was that, you know, it wasn't like listed on the inventory. And they're like, what is this? And so it just turned out that, well, it was an unfinished movie and all the film that was shot for it still existed in the original film cans. And so I guess uh, whoever they were dealing with in this transaction said, we can just throw those out. You don't have to worry about that. And of course, Vinegar Syndrome, being the company that they are, film preservationists, they said, oh, no way. We're at least let, you know, let us take it. We'll take it and uh, we'll take a look at it. And so they wound up uh, uh, producing it themselves using the original uh, footage that was shot in 1984. That's kind of the short version, okay? You can go online or better yet, uh, check out the special features on this package and, and find out all about it. Um, it was directed by John Liu. Originally a um, martial arts actor and um, then redirected by Curtis Spieler of Vinegar Syndrome. Now, essentially, uh, the plot is uh, uh, John Liu, the martial artist, his, he, he's, he's like a sound tech for a TV station, for local TV. And uh, uh, so he like follows around a, a cameraman and a reporter who work for a New York TV station. Well, his wife is murdered, and it just turns out that the police are just a little too busy to really deal with all the crime that has been going on in New York City. Um, and so John dons this white ninja outfit and uh, decides to take to the streets and, uh, and take out the bads, you know, and uh, kind of shades of, of Bronson and Death Wish a little bit. And um, this, of course, turns all the city's criminals on him. Now everybody wants to take out uh, uh, the New York Ninja, including uh, the mysterious plutonium killer, which is kind of a wild, cartoonish bad guy. And the whole thing is pretty cartoonish, which is what really made it fun. Now, what's really cool about this is when they got the, uh, the footage, there was no soundtrack. There was no dialogue. There was no sound effects. There was zero, zero sound. So Vinegar Syndrome had to go about recreating the soundtrack and the dialogue using new actors for this film. 
Now, one thing that's really cool to me is that it's a throwback to my favorite era, the 80s, and especially these fun, cartoony movies of the 80s. And what really adds to it for me is the actors that they were able to get to provide the voices for uh, the characters in New York Ninja. Don the Dragon Wilson plays the main uh, character, the New York Ninja, John Liu. And uh, the other actors present, Michael Berryman, Cynthia Rothrock, Linnea Quigley, Vince Murdaco, uh, Matt Mittler, Leon Isaac Kennedy, and Ginger Lynn, Ginger Lynn Allen. <laughs> and so, um, and many others that, uh, you know, received lesser billing. But just, just right there, I mean, those are all throwbacks to, uh, gosh, the 80s and 90s action, adventure, exploitation, throwback cinema that I grew up with. And so the fact that they're involved in lending their voices to this project really made it pretty cool and extra special for me. And so uh, the question is, how, how well did Vinegar Syndrome do putting this together? Because essentially they had to make a movie out of nothing. There was also no script available. So they didn't know what like the story was. There was nothing to follow along. They didn't know what the dialogue was. So they're trying to read lips on the silent footage, trying to find out you know, what these actors are saying and trying to put together a story. And it was very difficult to do, so they wound up trying to stay as close to the original vision as possible, but also, of course, having to put together sort of their own story of New York Ninja. Because some scenes were shot in full, but some kind of were not shot in full. And so some scenes didn't make a lot of sense within the context overall and things like that. Again, I'm trying not to get too d deep in the, the weeds with this um, so I can keep this kind of short. But um, I would say that the director from Vinegar Syndrome, Curtis Spieler, did a perfect job. It, it's perfect. I, 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 could, I can't see any way to change... I can't see anywhere where I would change what he did. And from the from the dialogue to the story that he put together, and you, you could probably be tempted to add some insert footage of your own using different actors, you know, shot in modern day, just to make a little more sense. There's none of that here, none of that. It is all the original footage. And, and they put together a, a film that, to me, plays just as well as a lot of, you know, low budget B film, uh, direct to video type of stuff that you that I would have watched as a kid and loved in 1984. And so I wouldn't change a thing with the 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 direction and the the way they put put it together and the final result. I think it just came out it came out perfect. Um, the uh, the score as I watched it, I also thought was was amazing. I thought the score is great. It was done by a group called Voyager 3, and they spell it with Voyager, with the E being the three in the middle, so if you want to look them up online, they're called Voyager 3, but they spell it with the E being the three. That's how they stylize it. But um, it, it was this, you know, synthesizer-heavy soundtrack, but also had, you know, live guitars and, and, and live instrumentation um, added to it, and I thought, wow, this is the type of music that I loved from that era. And then on, the, on one of the extras, they talk with members of the group Voyager 3, and, and they name drop my favorite <laughs> TV show as a kid growing up, Knight Rider, and Stu Phillips. Stu Phillips, who was the composer, the original composer of that first season of Knight Rider, who came up with all that iconic theme music and a lot of the original cues that that Knight Rider had, and then they name dropped that as inspiration for this, and I thought, well, of course, that's exactly how Stu Phillips did it back then, and a lot of the bands that I loved from that era that, that mixed synthesizers, they were new wave, but they, they also mixed in the live instruments, and those were some of my favorites. So, um, again, uh, you can read all or watch all about that in, in the extras um, on this, this New York Ninja. So, uh, take a look at the package. And this, is, this was the first VSP, which stands for Vinegar Syndrome Productions. So um, just another branching out, sort of a sub-label. Uh, I think they have, by now they have two VSPs, maybe three. I, I know they have two, but 
So anyway, it's got the magnet. Let's see if I can do this on camera properly here. Magnet, boop, right there, opens up. And then it's get this nice book thing. You got the ribbon, so you can pull up on the goodies that are in here. Here's the actual disc, which comes in its own slip case. There's a look at the art. All original art, I believe, by the Dude Designs, um, who does a lot of the artwork for Vinegar Syndrome. And, and I believe all this is original art, and uh, um, I don't think anything survived from the marketing. I don't think it got to that point um, as far as artwork and, and things like that went. I could be wrong. So, um, But anyhow, here's a look at the disc. And there's the back. There are two discs in here, two Blu-rays, one with the movie on it and a second disc with extra features, more special features. There are special features on the disc with the movie, but there are more special features on the second disc. And the reversible art, you can kind of see through the plastic there, just mirrors the, uh, the outer magnetic slip case. So, uh, but that's not all. Also in here, if we pull up the ribbon a little farther, we've got a book, a cool booklet, A Tale of Two Ninjas, the story of how New York Ninja came to be by Curtis Spieler, the director, the redirector, the director from Vinegar Syndrome. So uh, just a nice thin booklet. It's got a lot of art or a lot of stills, I should say, from the, uh, from the film in here. And um, just a nice story from the director on... From the beginning, from uh, when they acquired the film elements from 21st century to uh, <laughs> trying to put it, deciding what to do to put it together to um, having to, to try to do it during the, the pandemic that hit right in the middle of all of this that kind of threw everything off schedule and off track. And... Um, a lot of other stories, uh, you know, uh, like from getting the, how they got all these voice actors to uh, agree to do it and come on and, and lend their voices to New York Ninja. So, um, you know, is it good? I, I mean, it's to me, I, it was just as good or bad if you're uh, not into this type of thing, these types of, you know, silly movies, uh, as anything that you would have watched from 1984. Um, and the thing is, I would have been thrilled if they would have just saved the footage and said, hey guys, hey, come look at our, on our website, we've got this footage from this old ninja movie from 1984. I would have been thrilled just seeing that old footage to look at 1984 footage of New York City that I've never seen before. And, um, and just to, to see some of that footage. I probably wouldn't have watched all, however many hours of footage it was, but just to, to see some of that scenery, it, it's historical and, I'm, and I would have been happy that, that it didn't get thrown away. But instead we, we got a lot more than that. We got a lot more than leftover footage with, with this production. Um, I mean, it's a film that could have and should have been lost. And the fact that a boutique releasing company cared enough to, you know, to, to save this footage and assemble uh, what amounts to a 1984 Ninja movie that would have been an absolute hoot had I seen it at eight years old in 1984 is just incredible and so i applaud it and um it just makes you wonder how many other uh productions are out there sitting in cans that never got finished like this that at the very least just have a lot of historical scenery um it, it would just be cool if, if if more things like this could come out and be found and be released so the rest of us can enjoy it. So there you have it. Vinegar Syndrome Productions, New York Ninja from 2021 and 1984. So thanks for watching this video. I'll be back soon with some more haul videos and more reviews, and I will see you then.